Using the style option when it comes to setting up the sizes of your fonts is pretty simple to do when you go to typography and style as I've already shown you. And I strongly recommend you use clamp if you want to make your fonts so much more responsive. But sometimes I would actually recommend you don't add any values in here whatsoever and you actually create a CSS framework. This will make it easier to assign sizes to different text on your website. Now I'm going to show you what a lot of people tend to do and what I would like you to do throughout this course. We're going to go over to our text and we first ensure that we've removed clamp formula. We're going to leave the weight at 400. Let's go over to our heading and I'm going to set this to be a H1. I'm going to go to my style and again I'm going to get rid of the clamp formula. If you want to set this back to be pixel or REM you can do. Because what we're going to do is add in a bit of code so that whenever we add in a H1 value or we assign a heading to be a H1 tag, then it will automatically adopt a particular size. And here's how we create our CSS framework. We're going to go over to site settings. We've already addressed our global colors and global fonts, and we're going to go down to custom CSS. This is where we can add some code that will work throughout our site. Now, if you don't want to add any code in that affects the entire site and it only affects this page, then rather than going into your site settings, exit the site settings and go to your page settings instead. Go to the advanced tab and you can again drop in some code and this will only apply to this particular page. However, to be more efficient, it's good to start applying things on a global scale. So let's go back to site settings and custom CSS. And the first bit of code I want you to apply is this one over here. This ensures that where the rule of 16 pixels equals one REM, it maintains that. So the font size is always gonna be 100%. This isn't something you have to do, but I would advise on adding it in at the top of your code on this particular tab. Let's start assigning values to our H1. So I'm going to type in H1 open curly bracket and then I'm going to add in font size to REM. Did you notice the size change there? Let's go and change it to be four. Whenever I add in any text and I select H1, it will grow to that size. Now we've already addressed that we aren't going to just use REM static values or pixel. We're going to use a clamp calculation formula. Remember our clamp calculator? that you can get after you've activated the code snippets. I've got a range of values on here. The ones I'm most interested in though are H1 where I'm going from two REM on the mobile to four REM and H2 where I'm going from one REM up to three on the desktop. And down here we have P for paragraph. We go from one REM to 1.5. I'm gonna go and hit generate CSS. Now this time, rather than copying only part of the code, I could pick up all of the code. Let's go back over to our page and I'm now gonna paste that code. Remember, this is a H1 and this is a paragraph. Let's just paste that. You'll notice that the H1 has now grown to four REM and the paragraph over here has grown to 1.5 REM. Now, if you go and modify the values over here, it might not actually represent themselves on the screen because of the formula. So you need to go back to your clamp calculator and add in your new values. So if we go over to the mobile, you'll see that these have now shrunk down. And when we go up to tablet or the desktop or any other breakpoint, they will grow and shrink. So let's go and hit save changes. If I go back over to my heading, I can now go to H2 and it will now follow those clamp rules that we've gone and added in. So for instance, on H2, it was a three REM on the desktop. And then it goes down to a one REM on the mobile. You can see it's matching what we've got with the text. This means that whenever you're building a website and you drop in a heading or a paragraph, you're now following a rule or a style guide that you've created for your particular website. However, there is a downside to this. And this is where I want you to think out the box. And we are going to take things up a level in terms of your understanding and how you can make CSS work for you. Let's pop this back to be a H1 and then we're going to duplicate it. So wherever I use a H1, it's always gonna be that size. But what if I wanna use a H1 header on another page, but I don't want it to follow this particular rule where it's four REM on the desktop and two REM on the mobile? Well, because of my CSS, I'm a little bit stuck. Now, one way you could get around this is by assigning class names to your headings. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm going to make a copy of the H2 
and I'm going to paste it in here. I'm then going to change the tag to be H1. Now, both of them have currently changed because it's following an order, so the latest one supersedes. I'm then going to type in dot new underscore one. This is now assigning a class to that H1. But because this does not have the class currently applied, it's just been done in the site settings. These are following the first H1 rule. So let me now go and hit save changes. Let's go over to this second heading, which is tagged as H1. Let's go to the advanced tab and go to where we have CSS class. Now I wrote dot new underscore one. In the CSS class, we don't need to add in the dot. So I'm going to go new underscore one. Notice the size has shrunk. It's now adopting the other H1 CSS styling that I've applied. So I could now have multiple H1 styles written in my style guide or my site settings for the custom CSS, and I could apply them. But I actually want to take you a step further. What I want to show you is what I really want you to focus and use throughout the course. Let's get rid of the new one. Let's go over to our site settings and go to our custom CSS. I'm going to remove everything that we currently have and just keep the H1. The first thing I'm going to do is add in a new class name and I'm going to type in dot use. Then I will add in a colon is open bracket and inside of the brackets, I will add in all of my tags H1 comma H2 H3 all the way to P. I will then use what I've currently got below and I'm going to get rid of that H1 and I'm just going to add this in like that. So this is now saying that wherever the use class name is used, and it doesn't matter whether you're a H1, H2, H3, or a paragraph, this is the size it will adopt. If I go to my second heading now and go to the advanced tab, in the class name, I'm just going to type in use. Notice how it's grown. What about the text? Let's go to the advanced tab, and in the class name, I will again type use. It's grown to 4 REM. And when you go to the mobile, they will shrink down to 2 REM. Notice the difference between the sizes we got here because this does not have the use class name applied. Now, if we go to my style guide, you'll notice that I've already assigned some classes and the sizes I want to use. Because what we're going to do is rather than having random class names, we are going to use a naming convention of extra large, large, medium, small, etc. And we are going to set sizes for them so that as we build our website, and we add in our text and our weighting and our color, at any time we may go, this is gonna be extra large, we just type in the class name. This is gonna be medium, we just type in medium, and it will now adopt and pull through that size without you having to mess around with the styling or the typographies over here. So let's get rid of the word use for all of these texts, go back over to our clamp calculator, and we can almost ignore all of the tags that we have here, because I just wanna get the values. Our extra large starts at 4 REM and it goes to 2.5. Our large will go from 2.5 to 1.5. Our medium is 2 to 1.25. Our small is 1.25 to 1. My normal text will be 1.25 to 1. And my extra small goes from 0.94 to 0.82. Go and hit generate CSS and this gives you the code. We're going to copy all of this, go back to our site settings and custom CSS, and we're going to drop it in here. I'm going to change the use to say X large, and then I will replace the values above with our new formula values. We'll make a copy of what we have above, paste it below and change the class name to now be large, pick up the formula values and replace them. A great tip for knowing that you're pasting the right one is that you can see the minimum REM and the maximum REM over here. Do that for the others. So we've got our extra large, large, medium, small, and X small as well. But you will remember I did have one for normal as well. And that was based on the small size. So I'm just going to pick up the small. I'm going to go below my extra small, up, drop it in. And then I'm going to get rid of the open bracket dot small and the is so that we have this. And as soon as I add that, you'll notice all of these have shrunk down to be 1.25 REM. That's because none of these class names are currently activated. So what that means is when you add something to your page, it will always adopt this particular sizing. So whenever I add any text onto my page, it will adopt the 1.25 REM and it then shrinks down to the relevant size for the mobile. 
But let's go over to this heading, which is a H1. Let's go to the advanced tab, go to the class name, and I'm now going to type in X large. There's no need to put the dot in. And as soon as we do that, the size has been adopted. Let's go to the second one, and I'm now going to type in medium. Can you see what it's done? What about this text over here? Even though it is a text editor and it's classed as a paragraph, I now want this to be large. And it's now taken the size that sits between the extra large and the medium. And when you go over to the mobile, it again passes it through to help the text be much more responsive. This does take a bit of getting used to if you've never used a CSS framework before. And this is all in-house, inbuilt within Elementor and obviously the clamp calculator. You don't have to use or follow this. I will be using this in the course, which is why I really want you to get on board with it. But if you prefer to just go to the style option for your headings and your text, and you're just going to add in a pixel value or a static REM value or your own clamp calculated formula, you can do that. But if you can start doing this, you're going to make it quicker for you as you're building websites. Because at any time you might go, I want to make that smaller. And rather than you second guessing what your values are, you would go, okay, we're going to go from medium to small, maybe to extra small. And when you start to add in formulas like this, you can expand on it. So at the moment for the extra large, it's applying a font size. I'm going to click a return before the curly bracket, and I'm going to type in line height, colon, and I'm going to say 1EM. That helps to standardize your line height, and it makes it react responsibly to whatever is the size of the font, depending on your breakpoint and your sizes. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to add it into all of the others. Please remember that all of the codes we use here are provided within the course on the page so you can copy and paste it into your own website. There are two other things we could do, but you don't have to do this. But I do want to show you in case you decide to apply it. Let's go back over to our H1 and go to the style and the typography. Notice we did set a weight. I'm going to change that to just be default for now. If we go back over to our custom CSS and we're only going to touch the extra large, I could now type below the line height font weight colon. And if I type in 800, notice how it is now got weightier. Maybe we could change that to be 400 or 700 as to what it was when I had applied it within the style tab. So if you know that all of your extra larges are going to be a certain weight, you could do that. However, you may use the extra large size on different areas of your website. and You might not want to have one standard weighting applied. So this is where you could just leave it out. However, I do want to point out that if you had popped it in and let's change that to be 800 and on the actual page, we duplicate this and we go to the style tab. Remember, this is using the extra large class name. We go to the style tab, typography, I could go to the weight and I could change it. So you could apply a static size within your CSS and then override it. However, sometimes that can get a bit confusing with did you do it in the style or did you do it in this CSS, but I'll let you make that decision. As a rule of thumb, I like to remove the font weight unless I know it is definitely always going to be that. Maybe you're going to have an extra large class name and then you're going to have underscore and you're going to say that this is used for your contact form. So you know it's always going to be a font weight of 800. Then go and add it in. Now at the moment, this is using a particular style color and we can actually modify that as well within here. So I'm going to add in another line for the extra large and I will type in color colon hashtag FF0050. However, the color has not changed. And that's because we had applied it in the style tab. Let's go back over there. And I'm only going to do it to the top one. Let's remove this color. Let's click it and click the clear. And you'll notice now it has gone to pink or the magenta -y color. If we go back over to our site settings and our global color, we'll, you'll see that we've got primary, secondary text accent. So if you want to drop in a hex code, you could do. But if you've gone and created a global color palette, wouldn't it make sense to use that? So rather than you just dropping in the hex code, let's go and use the actual terms that we have here. Let's take into account the accent and the divider lines colors. Let's go to the custom CSS and over here where we have color, we're going to get rid of the hex code and instead we're going to pop this in. Now you may not have noticed a subtle color change there because the primary color is very close to the standard black. 
But I'm going to go over here to where it says primary, and I'm going to change that to say secondary. It's now gone to the orange color we were using before. What if I change that to say accent? It's now gone to the accent color. But remember, we had some custom colors. So if I was to go here now and type in lowercase, so if you are using uppercases when you create your global colors, always use lowercases here. And I type divider underscore lines, it now pulls through that color. Now there is a code snippet we use to ensure that this would work. Make sure you've got that activated. We will remind you of that in the description provided. So if you know that everything with the class name for extra large is going to be this particular color, you could go and add it into your CSS or you could leave it out. Next module, we are going to look at how we can make the colors be a whole lot more accessible. So you will be reminded about this bit of code then as well. Take the time to decide on what are your preferred sizes for your fonts and start adding it into a CSS framework.